Hey class, let's continue. Again, the question kanina is, bakit ang tagal mag-construct ng roadways? Now, meron kasing uh, kinoconsider. So, here, we have the road building process includes the following. The first one, the planning stage or the planning. We have there 6 to 24 months. The designing stage, we have there 15 to 24 months. The environment, the 9, 9 to 36 months. The right of way acquisition, 6 to 21 months. Uh, bakit ang tagal ng right of way? Well, uh, kung matatanda nyo, ito yung, idina, na, yung dahilan ng uh, DPWH, bakit nagkakaroon ng delay sa mga projects. Right of way, uh, uh, right of way acquisition, uh, nagkakaroon ng delay dito, dahil halimbawa, for a road widening project, eh, may matatama ang mga lote, establishments, na kung saan may problema sa mga titulo, mga title, or there is dispute in that property. Nag-aaway yung mga relatives, uh, hindi alam kung sino talaga yung may-ari, mga ganun. So, there are disputes concerning the uh, construction of, uh, uh, when it comes to the right of way acquisition. Now, we have there the construction phase. We have there 12 to 36 months. Thus, total project time can range from 4 to 12 years, depending on the physical characteristics, scope, and community support for the project. Community support, yes, it can affect the project. Limbawa, if the whole community is against, of the, against on the construction of a road or a highway, then, of course, doon nga, magkakaroon ng problema. Uh, they will barricade. They will hinder the uh, the construction of the uh, new highway or road, and they might appeal to the court. Yeah, nagtatagal talaga. So you cannot expect that uh, a certain project will just um, flow smoothly. Hindi 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 100 percent na lahat ng roadway project will flow smoothly. So may mga ganitong klase ng uh, hindrances. Kaya nagtatagal. Okay. Now, uh, in the Philippines, how about in the Philippines, uh, gano ka, ka haba yung mga highways natin? Um, we have there the statistics given by the census, uh, CEIC, the Census and Economic Information Center. Para lang magkaroon tayo ng idea, gaano kahaba yung mga kinoconstruct na highways uh, dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? The Philippines National Road Land. Uh, and yung ano nito is, coverage nito is 1993 to 2017. Philippines National Road Land data was reported at 32,868 kilometers in 2017. Imagine that. Ang uh, haba ng ating road, uh, ating highway. This records an increase from the previous number of 32,770 kilometers for 2016. Philippines National Road Net Data is updated yearly averaging 29,370 kilometers from December 1993 to 2017 with 25 observations. The data reached an all-time high of in no, 2017 with, with the 32,868 kilometers and a record low of 26,572 kilometers in 2003 as you can see from the graph. Now, since uh, limited yung aking device or it can only show 2000 to 2016 okay we have the Philippines National Road Length Data <laughs> it, has re it has remains active status in CEIC and is reported by Department of Public Works and Highways so si uh, DPWH ang nagsusupply ng data um, going back to our discussion so, yun nga. So, talagang mahaba yung mga uh, projects, highway projects, and it will take a long time to complete. Okay? 
So, uh, yun lang. Yun lang muna ang na-discuss uh, natin doon. As you can see, I'm skipping some topics here in our reference kasi hindi natin gagawin in-depth. It's introductory muna. Now, for the next one, uh, from our module, so it says there, learning activity 1 to 3. This time, sa pages 57 to 94 naman tayo sa ating reference. We have here the characteristics of the driver and on oh, the apat. The characteristics of the driver, the pedestrian, the vehicle, and the road. So, these are the four, the four main components of the highway mode of transportation. This, the driver, the pedestrian, the vehicle, and the road. We may consider natin in our construction of highway, in the design of highway. Uh, kung meron mang naiisip na other na i-consider, well, uh, pwede naman. Basta ito lang yung four main components. You can think of the bicycle, which is becoming an important component in the design of urban highways and streets, lalo ngayong pandemic. Uh, nakakatawa kasi ang gobyerno, naglalaan na siya ng, ng, uh, ng uh, space for uh, bicycles. Uh, we have the bicycle lanes. Para nga sa mga um, uh, nag-avail na nga ng bicycle as a mode of transportation. Okay? Now, to provide efficient and safe highway transportation, a knowledge of the characteristics and limitations of each of these components is essential. Hmm, bakit? It is also important to be aware of the interrelationships that exist among these components in order to determine the effects, if any, that they have on each other. O nga naman, kasi alaman naman mag-design uh, uh, mag ka ng highway, just considering the vehicle, well, madami kasing dumadaan na sasakyan, so I will construct a highway. No, it is not just plain highway. Uh, if you have observed, if you've been traveling uh, along the road, you were able to observe, ano na ngayon? We have the traffic lights, we have the, the, um, the pedestrian lane, Ba? Mayroon tayong mga signages. Uh, they, this, this, um, these are, uh, na, nailagay yan mga yan dahil kinonsider nila yung other components pa ng highways. Their characteristics are of primary importance when traffic engineering measures such as traffic control devices are to be used in the highway mode. So, uh, again, we are not just uh, focused on the vehicle lang. We are also considering the other components. So let's take the first one. Let's uh, uh, discuss them one by one. We have the driver characteristics. Oops, I'm not gonna... okay. One problem that faces traffic and transportation engineers when they consider driver characteristics in the course of design is the varying skills and perceptual abilities of drivers on the highway demonstrated by a wide range of abilities to hear, see, evaluate, and react to information. Studies have shown that these abilities may also vary in an individual under different conditions such as the influence of alcohol, fatigue, and the time of day. Bakit importante yung mga to? Okay. So, bakit uh, consider din itong mga to? We have the influence of alcohol, fatigue, and the time of day. Well, when you are designing, for example, you are the engineer who designed the highway, and then there is an accident on, in there, uh, masasisi ka ba na magkaroon ng accident doon? Halimbawa, naglagay ka ng concrete barrier doon. It's an accident. Are you the one at fault there? hindi ka 100% at fault there. Especially kapag ginawa mo lahat nung uh, na-perceive mo na kailangan gawin. Lagay ka ng, ng uh, reflect, reflectorized paint dun sa barrier mo para, para kahit gabi nakikita pa rin. Or nilagay mo siya sa tamang spot para hindi siya ma, 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 masagi. And kung uh, uh, tama ba yung yung uh, location niya. So, well, hindi ka masisisi 100% doon. Well, um, ang uh, 
Ano natin dito? The, the next sentence says, It is important that criteria used for design purposes be compatible with the capabilities and limitations of most drivers in the highway. Most drivers in the highway. Most. Kasi, alam naman natin na hindi lahat ng nagdadrive sa kalsada are capable drivers. Meron yung natutulang mag-drive, nag-drive na sa highway. Hindi pwede yun. Kasi, kaya nga tayo binibigyan or nag-apply nag, nag, uh, ng lisensya to drive, it is for us to be familiarized sa ethics ng pagdadrive sa kalsada. Yung mat matuto tayo kung ano yung mga kailangan tandaan, yung driving, ano yung mga signages, maikindihan natin kung ano yung mga signages, yung mga uh, uh, yung mga uh, control devices na makikita sa, sa highways. So, yun, nagkakaroon ng education. Na-educate yung, yung driver. Now, if you're, if, if the driver is someone who just went to drive in the highway without any education at all as to these components, well, uh, sad to say, there's a possibility of a accident, of an accident. And it is not the fault of the traffic engineer, of the, the transportation engineer doon. Because you've, do, you've done your part in making sure that the road is safe for everyone. Now, uh, we have here, under driver characteristics, the human response process. The, how do you respond? So, ito din yung isa sa inaaral ng mga nagdi-design ng highways natin. Para alam nila kung saan nila ilalagay, ipupwesto yung mga signages natin. We have their actions taken by drivers on a road result from their evaluation of and reaction to information they obtain from certain stimuli that they see or hear. So, any, any action doon sa roadway is dependent kung paano nga naman uh, i-perceive ng tao yung information na nakikita nila. However, Evaluation and reaction must be carried out within a very short time as the information being received along the highways is continually changing. It has been suggested that most of the information received by a driver is visual, implying that the ability to see is of fundamental importance in the driving task. It is therefore important that highway and traffic engineers have some fundamental knowledge of visual perception as well as hearing perception. Okay, o nga naman. So, you will, need, you will need to consider this in designing our highways. Now, ano tong mga uh, ito na i-consider natin? Well, um, we have there the peripheral vision. Well, the peripheral vision is the ability of people to see objects beyond the cone of clearest vision. Ito yung hindi mo direkta nakikita, but uh, out, uh, in the corner of your eye, you can, per, you can see it, perceive. Although objects can be seen within this zone, details and color are not clear, so medyo blurry. But still, alam mo andun yun. The cone for peripheral vision could be one subtending up to 160 degrees. These values affected by the speed of the vehicle. Mas mabilis yung pagpapatakbo mo the more na hindi mo na napapansin yung nasa peripheral vision mo age also age also influences peripheral vision so at age 60 a significant change occurs in a person's peripheral vision, hindi na nila masyado napapansin yung nasa gilid-gilid uh, nung kanilang uh, dinadaanan color vision color vision is the ability to differentiate one color from another but deficiency in this ability, usually referred to as color blindness, is not of great significance in highway driving because other ways of recognizing traffic information devices, example shape, can compensate for it. So good news sa mga may color blindness, you can still drive. Kasi ginagawa naman ng paraan para kahit na merong uh, deficiency sa ability na to see, uh, like this color blindness na compensate siya using the shapes and the combinations of color limbawa combinations of black and white and black and yellow has have been shown to to, to be those 
to which the eye is most sensitive. So, yun. Nagagawan pa rin ng paraan. Glare, vision, and recovery. Glare. Ito yung, uh, uh, ang tawag dun? Natatamaan ng, ng liwanag yung mata mo. So, there is a, of course, kung na-try nyo na matamaan ng direct sunlight ang inyong mata, or when you're driving, if you're a driver, is meron yung mga headlight na ba't nakatutok naman na sa driver of course there will be a temporary loss of vision and uh, a dangerous one, a dangerous um, ingredient for accident so ito yung kailangan din na i-consider and then the glare recovery in the glare recovery the time required by a person to recover from the effects of glare after passing the light source is known as glare recovery Depende rin sa tao. Uh, studies shown that this time is about 3 seconds when moving from dark to light and can be 6 seconds or more when moving from light to dark. Actually, depende rin eh. May mga tao na matagal mag-recover sa glare. Eh. Yung glare recover nila, matagal. Mayroon din yung mabilis lang. So, depende din. Especially the older ones na who see much poorly at night so sila din matagal din ang uh, glare recovery nila so why? why we need to consider this glare effects can be minimized so here so glare effects can be minimized okay by reducing luminar brightness and by increasing the background brightness in a bright in a driver's field of view specific actions taken to achieve this in lighting design include using higher mountain heights positioning lighting supports farther away from the highway and restricting the light from the luminaire to obtain minimum interference with the visibility of the driver so yan kailangan din i-consider yung uh, glare effects ng ating devices pwedeng itaas yung limbawa yung, uh, yung sa mga traffic lights natin imagine mo kung yung traffic lights ay sobrang liwanag tapos medyo mababa siya ng konti o so, ma ma magkakaroon ng glare yun pero if you observe hindi naman ganun ang nangyayari tamang tama lang yung lightings ng ating mga traffic lights tamang tama lang din yung height so mas, mas uh, comfortable tayong nagdadrive now, yun nga, may issue lang ako dun sa sa mga kotse, mga, mga sasakyan na yung kanilang headlight is, bakit nakatutok sa driver? Yung mga motor eh, mostly motor ko ako napapansin na bakit nakatutok sa driver? Kaya tuloy, ano, uh, may panandali ang pagkabulag din sana isa din to sa mga, ano, sa mga napapansin, and pinupuna ng mga traffic enforcers natin especially sa gabi yung mga observe nila yung mga headlights na bakit yung tutok nila pataas sinasadya kaya yun well I'm not knowledgeable when it comes to the design of the headlights but uh, hopefully sana ma-address yung mga ganyang issue or in, in hopes of reducing accidents caused by the glaring of the headlights okay we also have there the depth perception. Depth perception affects the availability of a person to estimate speed okay, and distance. It is particularly important, important to two-lane highways during passing maneuvers when head-on crashes may result from a lack of proper judgment of speed and distance. This is the very... Um, reason why, huwag kang magda-drive kapag lasing kasi especially kapag nag nag overtake kasi yung ating perception ng speed ng distance is nagkakaroon ng blurriness akala mo malapit, yun pala malayo akala mo malayo, yun pala malapit so, nadideceive ka na ng paningin mo dahil nga sa lasing ka so, please, please, if you're driving if your if your family is driving, uh, it's best na palalahanan palagi. Never ever 
induced alcohol, take in alcohol prior to driving. It will save your life. Okay? So, let's go to the next one. Okay, hanggang page anong page lang tayo we are only considering uh, was it page 19 oh, stata, tama. so we are only to consider up to page 94 Okay. So I'm just making sure that I'm not uh hindi ko na lalagpasan yung mga important details na kailangan nating. Well, actually these are all important details. Yun lang eh uh, we are under the uh, introduction introductory part. Okay? So let's go to the pedestrian. Now, uh consider natin yung driver's driver's uh, characteristic we have the pedestrian also. Now, pedestrian characteristics relevant to traffic and engineering uh, practice include those of the driver discussed in the preceding sections. In addition, other pedestrian characteristics may influence the design and location of pedestrian control devices. Such control devices include special pedestrian signals, safety zones and islands at intersections, pedestrian underpasses, elevated walkways, and crosswalks also. Apart from visual and hearing characteristics, walking characteristics play a major part in the design of some of these controls. For example, the design of an all-red face which permits pedestrian to cross an intersection with heavy traffic requires knowledge of the walking speeds of pedestrians. Observations of pedestrian movements have indicated that walking speeds vary between 3 and 8 feet per second. Significant differences have also been observed between male and female walking speeds. Mas mabilis maglakad ang lalaki kesa sa babae. Uh, depende well, this is, this must be generalized. But, uh, you can observe, medyo bumibilis na rin maglakad din yung mga girls. But, except when you're having your high heels, medyo babagal tayo. Kasi meron din bumabagal maglakad, especially pag may hawak na phone. Yung mga nag, nag, nag-chat habang naglalakad, bumabagal yan. Now, uh, this is also something to be considered in the modern design of the, um, of the uh, uh, highways, the control devices, yung modernization, like, yun nga, um, mas bumilis bang maglakad ang mga tao, or mas bumagal because of the technology, emerging technologies, like, yun nga, mga busy na nalag mo Mobile Legends, na habang naglalakad, or di kaya may ka-chat, excited mag-reply, so, nag-chat habang naglalakad. So, this is something to be considered in our modern times too. Consideration also should also be given to the characteristics of handicapped pedestrians such as the blind. Studies have shown that accidents involving blind pedestrians can be reduced by installing special signals. The blind pedestrian can turn the, the signal to a red face by using a special key which also rings a bell, indicating to the pedestrian that it is safe to cross. Na, napansin nyo na siguro, meron sa, uh, sa mga ano na natin, meron na tayong mga um, stoplights na tumutunog yung may countdown. Ba? Meron din yun. Uh, then, kapag pwede nang maglakad yung pedestrian, meron siyang certain tunog na iniimit. In the, uh, telling the pedestrian that it's time to go, it's time to walk. So it is beneficial for blind pedestrians, most especially sa kanila, kasi 
yeah they cannot uh yeah see the the colors of the uh stoplight okay ramps okay we have the ramps are also now being provided at intersection curbs to facilitate the crossing of the intersection by the occupant of a wheelchair yes in these modern times you are you will be able to observe these uh, ramps sa mga gilid ng kalsada hindi siya designed for hindi lang siya designed for the motor it is uh, designed for the wheelchair so this is for consideration for those with uh, who are uh, uh, moving using wheelchairs okay we have also here vehicle characteristics criteria for the geometric design of highways are partly based on the static kinematic and dynamic characteristics of vehicles static characteristics include the the weight and size of the vehicle while kinematic characteristics involve the the motion of the vehicle without considering the forces that cause the motion dynamic characteristics involve the forces that cause the motion of the vehicle since nearly all highways carry both passenger automobile and truck traffic it is essential that design criteria take into account the characteristics of different types of vehicles a thorough knowledge of these characteristics will aid the highway and or traffic engineer in designing highways and traffic control systems that allow the safe and smooth operation of a moving vehicle particularly during the basic maneuvers of passing stopping and turning okay so along na iisip nyo when uh, when we're reading this actually while well, i'm reading this i'm thinking about trucks hirap nga namang magmani obra ang truck ano so when you design highways, you are to consider also, ay, baka daanan din ito ng truck. So, hindi ka basta-basta nagkukurba, gumagawa ng kurba sa highway mo na, na parang uh, gumuhit ka lang sa compass mo. No. You are also to consider, ano yung mga sasakyan na pwedeng lumiko dito? Meron bang 10-wheeler truck na gagamit dun sa highway? Kung may 10-wheeler truck, kaya ba niyang lumiko dito sa kurba na to? So, you are to consider that too. Okay? So, as mentioned, static characteristic, the size and the weight of the vehicle. Okay? So, that's how it is. Okay? So, ito yung mga iba't ibang klase ng truck. So, kailangan mo rin consider yung mga ganyang klase ng vehicle para makapag-design ka ng highway na fit to all. Fit pati dito sa, ano, sa truck. So imagine this, this part here. <laughs> basta, kung basta-basta ka lang na nagdi-design ng uh, pakorba. So kinorba mo lang ng ganyan. Yung yung uh, roadway. May kailangan ka ring i-consider na length ng mga uh, vehicle mo. For example, in this design here, uh, probably the the engineer, the engineer was able to observe Kasi prior to design of highways kasi, you observe mo muna yung, yung area. Ano ba yung kadalasang dumadaan doon? Ano ba yung mga nire-request nila na, na mga dadaan na sasakyan doon sa area na yun? If ganito klase ng sasakyan, yung, yung at most na length na gagamit doon, 30 feet na trap, well, uh, para ka lang naglalaro ng ano, Actually, ganito yung ginagawa ng ibang engineers eh. Meron silang scale model ng, ng sasakyan. Kung ito yung sasakyan na gagamitin, gagawa sila ng maliit na miniature na, na toy truck na ganito. And then, wala lang, ano, i-move lang nila. Gagalaw-galawin lang nila. Maliliko na ganyan. Kung ganito yung radius niya. At a certain scale ng aking uh, highway, makakadaan ba? So, maglaking tulong din na mayroong ginagamit silang miniature na truck. So, dito, in this design, you have their this truck, liliko dito. Kinoconsider nila na itong, uh, okay, itong gulong na to, if you observe itong gulong na to, part na to, 
ito yung mga dadaanan niya. Okay? Ito. Tumama doon. Yan. So, isasagad ba? Hanggang dito yung, ano, sasagad ba hanggang dyan yung kalsada mo? Well, magbigay ka naman ah, ng konting, ano, konting espasyo. Para naman may, uh, may, uh, ta, may, may room para doon sa gulong. Kaya dito, makita nyo, the broken line. Yan. Maglaan ka rin ng konting espasyo para sa mga gulong. So, another thing to observe is this wheel here. Sa bandang likod. So, dadaan yung wheel na yan. So, ayun, tumama doon. So, ikaw, as a designer, maglaan ka rin ah, ng konti. Maglaan ka ng konting space din para doon sa sa dadaanan ng gulong na yan. Para hindi naman sagad-sagad na naka, ano na, paano kung bagyo, sa bagyo kayo nagdi-design ng highway. Ano yun, hulog na yung truck mo. So, maglagay ka rin ng konting space para may uh, wiggle area doon sa ano sa gulong mo. So, most of the time, we are, use, we are to use also common sense in designing. Okay? So, the, we have the kinematic, dynamic, and the uh, static characteristics in the solving part. We are not yet to uh, go that part there. Now, the last one will be the road characteristics. Here, the, for the road characteristics, the characteristics of the highway discussed in this section are related to stopping and passing because these have a more direct relationship to the characteristics of the driver and the vehicle discussed earlier. Okay, and then much more will be discussed later about this. So, i-ano lang natin, pa-familiarize lang natin ano yung mga side distance and stopping side distance. Uh, what I mean is stopping side distance and passing side distance. Okay? So, here we have the side distance. It is the length of the roadway a driver can see ahead at any particular time. The side distance available at each point of the highway must be such that when a driver is traveling at the highway's design speed, adequate time is given after an object is observed in the vehicle's path to make the necessary evasive maneuvers without colliding with the object. So there are two types of sight distances, the stopping sight distance or the SSD and the passing sight distance or the PSD. So ano itong dalawang to? What's the difference between these two? The stopping sight distance for design purposes is usually taken as the minimum sight distance required for a driver to stop a vehicle after seeing an object in the vehicle's path without hitting that object. This distance is the sum of the distance traveled during the perception reaction time and the distance traveled during braking. Meaning, uh, well, sa mga driver, uh, specialist, kung sino man nagdadrive sa inyo, mapapansin nyo kapag nag, nag, uh, pinapakan nyo yung brake, hindi agad-agad humihinto yung sasakyan. Meron pa rin siyang certain distance na trinabel. Uh, actually, the, the heavier the vehicle, the, yung, mas malayo yung natatravel niya na distance kapag nagbabrake. Now, hindi lang yan ay consider natin for the stopping sight distance. We have also to consider the perception reaction time. Nakakita ka ng bagay. So, yung, yung perception ng tao, kung ilang seconds niya marirealize na kailangan mag-stop, kailangan di consider yon. Remember, the vehicle is running. Tumatakbo yan. So, nag, habang nag-iisip ka, there is a certain distance na natatravel na habang nag-iisip ka. So, we need to consider ilang segundo na pa-perceive nung driver yung nakita niya and then nagre-react siya. And then, aapak siya ng brake. Or, yung total nun is the stopping sight distance. Hanap tayo na example na ng figure. Let's have a figure for that. Stopping sight distance. 
So here is an example or figure of a stopping sight distance. May nakita kang uh, ayo palimbawa, aso, deer. Okay? So yung kotse na red, it has detected the hazard. Now, kung makikita nyo, meron may 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 uh, distance na reaction distance and then the braking begins and then from the braking point there up to the car stand still yun yung tinatawag na braking distance that is your stopping sight distance now take note it is the minimum distance mula dun sa kotse na nagreact ka nakita mo yung bagay papunta dun sa bagay na yun so imagine uh, saan saan ito ano saan ito applicable imagine sa sa school sa pedestrian crossing sa school kailan ka magla uh, saan ka maglalagay ng uh, warning o ng sign na it is a school zone ano yon 5 meters mula doon sa pedestrian area papunta doon sa ano sa sa sign signages na school zone or ilang metro pa depende depende sa stopping site distance na makukompute mo so yun yung reason na naglalagay tayo ng mga signages at a certain distance from the point kung nasaan yun kasi meron uh, one time I was uh, I was in a bus eh, may, may, ano, may passenger kasi na nagsabi na bakit naglalagay ng sign nung papunta ng bagyo yun eh na danger danger uh, yung uh, ang tawag doon yung falling rocks ba't naglagay ng sign na danger falling rocks hindi daw doon sa mismong may nagpo-fall na rocks well the reason is it was put at a certain distance I think that was how many meters away from the from the area na may nalalaglag talaga na debris the reason is, para maging aware yung driver, ay, oh, may falling rocks pala dun sa banda dun. So, mag-iingat siya. And then, for for him to be able to to uh, to hit the brake kung merong nag-fall na rock, and then, hindi siya tatama dun sa nag-fall na rock na yun. Okay? So, that is the purpose of the stopping side distance. Okay, how about the passing side distance? The passing sight distance, the minimum sight distance required on a two-lane, two-way highway that will permit a driver to complete a passing maneuver without colliding with an opposite vehicle and without cutting off the past vehicle. So, ito yung ano, mag-overtake ka safely uh, na hindi, ka magkakaroon, hindi magkakaroon ng collision. So, for the passing sight distance, we have there an example. Halimbawa ito. For the passing sight distance, kunwari ikaw yung nagda-drive ng blue vehicle in the, in the figure, and then nasa harapan mo is yung red vehicle. You are to overtake that vehicle, so parehas kayong tumatakbo at a certain speed. Now, from the point there at the leftmost, and then you are to overtake the vehicle, and then may napan mayroon palang paparating na kulay orange na sasakyan dun sa opposite lane. So, for for you to evade that the possible collision, kailangan kang mag-consider ng distance na kung saan hindi magkakaroon ng collision with the orange and the red vehicle. Kasi parehas yan na tumatakbo habang nag-o-overtake ka. So, the formula there, PSD is equal to the distance 1 the plus distance number 2 plus distance number 3 distance number 4 hindi kompleto to eh. okay so that's how it is you are to consider also yung takbo rin ng mga sasakyan kaya nga mas maigi kapag nagda-drive tayo please lang paulit-ulit huwag mag-drive ng lasing kasi hindi 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 accurate yung perception mo when it comes to the distances and the speed hindi mo 
hindi mo nakikita or hindi mo accurately na perceive yung speed ng nasa harapan hindi mo accurately na perceive yung speed ng na nasa opposite lane then hindi mo rin na perceive accurately yung distance o yung pagitan nyo ng vehicle na nasa harap at yung vehicle na nasa opposite lane so that's how it is that is your passing side distance yun yung ano yun yung naka, naglalagay ng signages na uh, you can overtake at this point, mga ganun. Okay? So, that's all for today. Uh, stay tuned for other video lectures, short video lectures. And, uh, uh, this is how we will be conducting our classes. So, that's all for today. Thank